In the above footage, you can see a teacher snapping in front of his students over a little misunderstanding. The teacher gets so angry that he starts damaging the school property while screaming like crazy. The following animation is loosely based on this scary footage. I was in high school when this incident happened. We had a chemistry teacher who suddenly left the job and a new substitute teacher came in his place. On the day of our first class, everyone was sitting in the classroom waiting for the new teacher to arrive. I was scribbling in my notebook when I overheard a conversation between my two classmates sitting right beside me. Really? Is it true? Yeah, man. I heard the janitor talk to the cafeteria cook yesterday about Mr. Nevis's sudden transfer. But I heard he quit. No, you heard it wrong. He was made to quit so the principal's friend can get the job. I heard he's a very freaky looking dude. Why? What does he look like? The janitor said that he looks like a mad scientist. He was sent to the mental institution for treatment, but now he's back. I don't think some lunatic would be allowed to teach us. After all, it's about the students' safety. No one gives a damn about the students. The mad scientist guy will be here any moment. You can then judge on your own. I just said what I heard yesterday. Rumors are part of high school, so at first, I ignored whatever they discussed. I thought he would be like any other boring teacher, but time proved me wrong. The class was becoming chaotic as the students got impatient. Some started throwing paper balls at each other while the couples started making out in the corner. Everyone was highly distracted when suddenly the classroom door slammed open like someone kicked it from the other side and a crazy looking man entered the classroom. He had a messed up electrocuted hairstyle with a very freaky looking nose. The man had a bunch of books in his hand and slammed them on top of the teacher's desk and then screamed in a high-pitched voice. I won't tolerate any kind of nonsense in my class, you two. Stop shoving each other's tongues in your mouths and take your seat. His appearance was intimidating, no doubt. All the students went quiet immediately and took their seats. He then grinned really huge and slowly scanned the classroom with his vulture eyes. I will teach in my own unique way, so anyone who has a problem with that, get out of my class right now! Again, no one replied and just sat shocked and terrified. He then picked up a chalk and wrote his name on the board. He slowly turned back at us and said, No sir, no mister, my name is Dr. Vink, and all you will call me that, understood? None of us knew what to say, so we remained quiet, and he screamed again. Answer me, you morons! We said yes, being all frightened. Dr. Vink indeed had a very weird way of teaching. In the first class, he made us rip our chemistry book pages and throw them in the class dustbin. Our school football team captain, Jack, tried to protest, but Dr. Vink shut him up, saying, Are you one of those popular kids who's planning to get a scholarship based on a stupid game? Excuse me? I am here to teach you so the doors are open and the football ground is outside. You are most welcome to leave any minute. After that, Jack sat down and never spoke a word again. Everyone knew how important the chemistry scores are to land a good scholarship, so we all did exactly what Dr. Vink told us to. One thing that always struck odd to me is that he never talked to the other teachers in our school. I never saw him eat in the cafeteria either. Once he was done with our class, he went straight to the chemistry lab and spent the entire day till school was over. He never took us to the lab after joining us as our chemistry teacher. And whenever any student asked him about that, he always said, The lab is under maintenance. I am running my own experiments there. I will take you in once I am done. No student ever complained about this because they knew Dr. Vink will make their life miserable if he finds out we ratted him out. And he will find out. Apart from his craziness, he was a good teacher. The way he taught chemistry actually started making sense to me. Even the stupidest students always paid attention in his class. The overall grades started to go high so the parents and school authorities stood out of his way too. But sometimes I felt he gave good grades just to keep himself out of trouble. He kept everyone happy by providing this delusion that our school chemistry standards had gotten higher since he joined. One day, he took a surprise test and everyone passed. My friend Kyle and I were discussing our papers when I noticed I had made two terrible mistakes, but Dr. Vink still gave me an A. Thinking he might have overlooked it, I went to him with my paper and said, 
Um, sir? Dr. Vink! Yes, uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Vink. I've made mistakes here, so the grade should be B+, plus, not an A. I-, I think you overlooked... My, my, my. Aren't you the flag bearer of truth? What? You don't want good grades? No, it's not that. I just want to know if I'm actually getting good at chemistry, and wrong grades can cloud my judgment. Hmm. What do you want to be after you finish high school? Um, I was thinking of applying for a scholarship at NYU. I'd, I want to study history. <laughs> there. You have your answer. Sorry, I, I don't understand. You want to study history, so shut your damn mouth and go to your seat. It doesn't matter if you get an A, a B, or a C in chemistry, you moron! I felt very insulted and couldn't help but answer him back. It does matter, Dr. Vink. And you are the most pathetic teacher I have ever seen in my life. You are basically lying instead of preparing us for the future. You're desperate to stay in this school. Maybe because you know what a big failure you are in real life! The entire class got silent and stared at us. Dr. Vink's face started to turn red in anger. He suddenly got up from his chair and grabbed the laptop on his desk and started slamming it on the table while screaming like a lunatic. How dare you talk to me like that? How dare you? You, you incompetent, moronic fool! The laptop shattered into pieces. He started kicking and destroying everything he could find in that classroom. Being freaked out by his behavior, all the students ran outside screaming for help. The principal and other teachers arrived, but none of them could even get one step close to our mad chemistry teacher. He just snapped and kept demolishing the school property. Having no other option left, the school authorities called the cops. Even when the cops were dragging Dr. Vink out of the classroom, he was kicking in the air, spitting everywhere, and threatening to kill us all. I will be back, morons! They can't keep me behind bars forever! And next time, oh, I'll burn this school down to the ground! I will dance over your ashes! <laughs> my name is Dr. Fink, and I will have my revenge! The principal was bashed by the student body and the parents for hiring someone with such a traumatizing mental state. What scared our town was when the cops searched our chemistry lab, they found explosives and highly dangerous chemicals made by Dr. Vink. He actually wanted to blow this place up. If I hadn't confronted him that day, then probably this mad scientist would have been dancing on our ashes after burning the school down to the ground. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If so, please leave a like. And also, a small percentage of people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. If you want to support this channel and make this channel reach the 1 million mark, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can change your mind later. Enjoy. In the above footage, you can see a teacher yelling and insulting a little girl in front of an entire class. The following story is loosely based on this horrifying footage and will be presented as a dramatized animated version. Being a parent is not easy, and I understood that when I became a mother. I wanted to protect my daughter in every way, because I remember that one event of my life which left a forever cursed mark in my memory. I was 10 years old. Both of my parents were doctors, so they enrolled me in a boarding school which had a very strict schedule. Even though other students were as miserable as me, I was scared to death by this one particular teacher. His name was Mr. Perrin, and he was a crazy guy. He used to teach our English classes, but was terrible at it. He yelled more than he taught us. I hated him unlike anything. I wanted to run away from that school, but I couldn't. Every day, Mr. Perrin would enter the class, saying his usual catchphrase. Let's start, idiots! We were poor kids who remained quiet and succumbed to his insults every day. But one day, things became too intense. I was having difficulty understanding a lesson when Mr. Perrin called me to the blackboard. Where is your mind, Susie? This is a very easy thing. How can you not understand? I'm... I'm sorry, but I... 
Is your brain stuffed with garbage? I'm trying hard, but you scream a lot. Oh, now it's my fault that you're dumb. If that's anyone's fault, Susie, it's your parents. Surely they must be stupid, too. While yelling, he poked my head so hard with his finger that I almost got a dent in my skull. It was practically a violation of teaching conduct. But as I said, I was staying in a boarding school, and I was too scared to think it through. Mr. Perrin pointed at the classroom door and yelled one more time. Get out of my class, you idiot! I left the class in tears. Saturday was two days later, so no way I could see my parents and tell them about this scary teacher. After school hours, I went back to the hostel and was sitting alone when my only friend Tamara came to me. She sat beside me and said, Don't be sad, Susie. Mr. Perrin is evil. He insulted my parents today. I'll tell mommy and daddy to teach him a lesson. You don't have to wait that long. We can do this too. What? How? Come with me. That night, my friend Tamara and I decided to pull a prank on him. Mr. Perrin lived in the teacher's quarters right behind our hostel. He was a bulky, overweight person and sweated a lot, so he kept his room window open the entire night for air. We quietly sneaked to his window and peeked into his room. He was preparing himself to take a bath. Ew, look at his hairy body. Tamara said in disgust, seeing Mr. Perrin changed into a towel. His boxers were on the bed. As soon as he went inside the bathroom, we took out Tilly from a glass jar and placed it on Mr. Perrin's boxers with the help of a stick. Tilly was Tamara's giant fire ant, whom she had found in the garden and decided to keep as a pet. As soon as we were done, we quickly dodged under the window and waited. The bathroom door opened and we heard Mr. Perrin whistling, followed by footsteps. And then a few minutes of silence reigned. <coughs> Tamara and I ran away right away. The next morning, we heard Mr. Perrin was rushed to the hospital for having been bitten by some insect in his private parts. We laughed so hard that day in class, but our laughter didn't last very long. The next day, Mr. Perrin was back. His walk was kind of funny because of the injury, but his face was ten times scarier. His bloodshot eyes were bulging out in anger. Grinding his yellow teeth, he yelled, I know it wasn't an accident, and I know someone from this class sneaked into my room window last night. I heard running footsteps when the ant bit me. The day I find out who it was, I will teach them a lesson they will never, never forget. Tamara and I exchanged a fearful look, and I saw a creepy grin appear on Mr. Perrin's face. Surprisingly, he didn't yell at us the entire class. We went out for recess. There was a big jungle gym located at the end of the playground. I was sitting under it, regretting that prank, when I heard footsteps at some distance. I looked up, and what I saw chilled my bones. Mr. Perrin was standing right in front of me with a psycho smile. He stooped down to my level, brought his face extremely close to mine, and said in a scary voice, It was you, Susie. Wasn't it? What? What are you? Do you think I am stupid like your parents? Saying this, he grabbed me by the shoulders and started shaking me violently while laughing and screaming like a deranged lunatic. <laughs> do you know what I'll do to you? I'm gonna take off all your clothes and feed you to a heap of fire ants. You will scream louder than me, and I will enjoy your cries for help. <laughs> I will soothe my ears to that joyful music. I will make you pay. <laughs> help! Help me! <laughs> I was too small to free myself from his grasp. Suddenly, all the other kids on the ground started screaming as well, seeing Mr. Perrin's outburst. The teachers came and separated him from me after applying great force. I must have fainted during that psychotic episode because I don't remember a thing except for Mr. Perrin's scary face. My parents reported him and he was fired from the school. 
I was also sent to stay with my grandparents. It felt bad to leave Tamara there, but I needed more attention and care after undergoing such trauma. My grandparents took me in with a lot of love and care. I don't know where Mr. Perrin is now, but I hope I never meet such a terrible teacher ever again. In this video, we can see how a music teacher behaves violently with his students. In this animated dramatization, we will see how a joke played by some of his students turns into the worst day of their lives. I love music. Since I was a child, I've been in contact with it because my parents were part of a well-known musical duo in which my mom was the pianist and my dad was the singer. Whenever they would take me to their shows, I would look at them amazed, thinking that I wanted that for myself in my future. I tried several instruments, but I was definitely in love with the violin. The lessons at my school were not enough for me, so I went to private lessons to perfect my technique. When I was in school, I was way ahead of the rest of my classmates. Our music teacher, Mr. Langsley, was a substitute and seemed like a great man. He loved the violin more than his family, and in the first lesson, he didn't hesitate to show us how talented he was with it. But of course, appearances can be deceiving. As the months went by, he showed us that he was a highly unstable person. Every time one of the students played badly, he would get angry and scream. He never had a problem with me, as I was the best student, but that didn't mean I approved of how he disrespected my classmates. We were coming to the end of the school year, and my friends and I weren't going to leave without playing an innocent prank on him. Are you sure about this, guys? Sure, why not? I mean, with the rest of my grades, I could have easily taken a nap in class and still passed. Yeah, he can't fail us. But what about you, Evan? I already disapproved, but it won't change anything. Then it's all settled. How will we do it? Basically, we'll play all the instruments wrong. We'll start with one, and then another, and so on. Oh my god, he's gonna go crazy! When the professor entered, everything went according to plan. Langsley got angrier and angrier. The fact that even I had failed made him realize that we were playing a joke on him, and he didn't take it well. He pounded his fists ferociously on the table and gave a war cry. No one was scared. We all laughed at him since we were used to his tantrums. When the class ended, he was still furious, totally out of his mind. But surprisingly, he called out to us much more calmly than I expected. Nia, Scott, I need you two to stay after class to have a chat. What about me, Professor Langley? Do you want to talk to me too? Evan, we both know there's nothing left to talk about with you. Now, go away. A pleasure, sir. Now that he's gone, we can talk. Sir, first of all, I want to say we're sorry. No, 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 no. We're past that point. Grab your instruments. More confused than scared, we listened to him and sat in our chairs. His attitude was calm and determined. We had never seen him like that before, and honestly, it scared us both. What you did today is unacceptable. Not only did you ridicule me in front of my students, but you also made fun of the music. You interrupted something beautiful to make a joke, and from you, two of my best students, my prodigies, I will not tolerate it. Sir, as Nia said, we are... Before Scott could finish the sentence, Langsley pulled a revolver out of his pocket and pointed it at the young man's face. Say it. I dare you to say you're sorry again, and I'll open a hole between your eyes. We were both paralyzed with fear, unable to say a word. Much better. As I said, you both have to be punished. And you know what? I will only punish one of you. Now, they are going to repeat the melody they ruined in a loop. Each time they will do it faster, and the first one who ruins it again will be punished. What do you think? Have you lost your mind? I won't play any damn music. Let us go, or we're going to call the police. 
my life is over. You can call whoever you want, but first, you must survive this afternoon. Now, both of you are going to play as if your lives depended on it. Understand? We both nodded, and with his direction, we began to play. I always played the violin with calm and happiness. I felt how the music passed through my body. It was poetry. Now, none of that was happening. I was playing, trembling while crying. It was hard to breathe, and in each musical note, I felt I was getting it right just for a split second. I couldn't lose my concentration in turning to look at Scott, but I knew he was feeling the same way I was. What the hell are you doing? That's it? Come on! Faster! Faster! The minutes passed, and we both kept playing perfectly. But the fatigue started to take over me. My wrist hurt like hell, and my arm burned like never before. Without realizing it, I had begun to sweat. And I call you prodigies? You're a damn joke! And if you don't pick up speed, I'll kill you both now! Crying, I bit my lip and gave a desperate scream, closing my eyes as tightly as I could as I stopped feeling my arms. All I could think was faster, faster. My mind went blank. I felt like I was going to fall at any moment. I couldn't do this for another second. I felt a screeching sound on the violin. Had it been mine? Had it been Scott's? I opened my eyes as I felt a cold metal on my forehead. You can stop. You won. I turned and looked in Scott's direction. He was crying, inconsolably, staring at the ground. Never, never disrespect music again, Nia. Now go. With no strength to answer him, no strength to fight or try to save my friend, I stood up and walked toward the door. My legs were shaking, and as I looked at them, I realized that I had wet myself. Walking with great effort, I reached the exit door, and crying, I looked at Scott. Scott, I'm sorry. <laughs> he didn't turn around and I left the classroom. As I was walking through the halls, I felt an explosion coming from the classroom. I immediately grabbed my chest. That shot was probably at Scott, but it felt like it went through my heart. People started going to the classroom, passing by me as if I was a ghost. Suddenly, I heard another gunshot, this time accompanied by screams. A short time later, the police were at my house. My parents were comforting me as I told them everything that had happened. The crime was ruled a homicide and a suicide. That same day, Langsley had killed his wife and son and went to teach his last class. After that, it took me a long time to reconcile myself with music, but eventually I was able to do so. More than a decade later, I became a music teacher. Like Langsley, I love music, but the difference is I treat my students well. I help them, educate them, and give them all the tools they need so that in the future, even if they don't go into music, they will learn to be better people.